Hello, and welcome to the User Experience Enhancements and New Technical Support Site webinar. Uh, my name is Ryan Vanek. I have worked at SDS2 for 21 years now, uh, working in the support department, training department. Um, currently, I am a product owner uh, working on new enhancements within SDS2 and also helping manage our cloud offering. Today, we're going to be covering some user experience enhancements and also online help with the new technical support site. User experience updates, some of the updates, dark mode, um, searchable tool enhancement, quick access pinned icons, and then we'll go into online help with updates, um, how it works offline, technical support site, some of the things that we can do in there, um, like searching uh, video library and the toolbox. Um, these are just some of the areas that we're going to cover. We're going to start out with user experience. Um, the first thing is dark mode. Um, we have decided to create a dark mode. This is shown to reduce eye strain for users and also reduce the power consumption of your computer. So there are two options for dark mode, or two options to set dark mode. Um, in your user and site options, you will have under the general tab, UI theme. This is a radio button for dark or light. This option will control the windows, the interface windows. So the main menu, the modeling, drawing editor window, any of the member edit windows will be in the dark mode. The next option is going to be under the modeling tab, still under user and site options. And this is going to be the preset color pa palette. This is light or dark mode as well. What this is going to control is things like your background color, the wireframe outline, the members, how they're going to look, the text. If we're going to change to a maybe a darker um, background, we need lighter text so it shows. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into SDS2 and show you these options. If we go into our utilities and we have our user and site options, the first option, as I said, is under the general tab. If we look here, we have the first thing UI theme, light or dark. We're going to switch that over to dark. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to, as I said before, our main menu, our drawing editor windows, all of our interface windows are going to be in the dark mode. Let's just go ahead and flip that over. Now, we didn't see it change. We're going to have to exit out of SDS2, then come back into SDS2 in order for that to take effect. Once our main menu comes up, we'll see that we are now in the dark mode. We can kind of see it already in some of the windows that are popping up, and we are currently in the dark mode. Now, if we go over to modeling and look inside of modeling, we'll see that one aspect of modeling has changed to a dark mode. That's going to be the interface, the toolbars, and ribbon will be in the dark mode. But we'll see that the background color and such will not be dark quite yet. So you, here we have our interface. We see our different windows. Our select and direction view window comes up, and that is in dark mode. But our background and whatnot is not in a dark mode. So let's go ahead and just exit out of modeling real quick. So we're going to go back. We'll go into user and site options. And our next option is under the modeling tab. So if we look at the modeling tab, roll down a little ways, we have our preset color palettes, dark mode and light mode. If I click that over to dark mode, we'll see that my modeling background has changed to a black color and some of the options down below, we'll see piece marks. Now they're going to be white. I can switch between those if I select light mode. These are just presets. Um, we'll see them change automatically. Now, if I come in here and I change something like the modeling background, and I say, well, I want that to be red. I don't think you'll ever do that, but we change that over to red. We click back over to dark mode. It brings up those presets. These aren't saving within the dark or light mode. These are just presets. If I don't touch these and I change something, it will hold those um, when I come back and forth in. But these are presets that will change everything. No matter if I change something, it's just going to go to those presets. So we're going to go over to dark mode. We'll go ahead and say OK here. We'll go back into modeling. Now that modeling's up, we can see that we go to our ISO view. We have our 
dark mode, our user interface of the dark mode, and also our background and um, all the different colors have changed within there. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So in our user experience, we're gonna look at searchable tools. So when we search for a tool or command within the modeling or drawing editor window up in the upper right-hand corner, what SDS2 will do now is highlight that in our ribbon. So if I type out that command, search for it, it will show me exactly where it is. So if we look inside of SDS2 and take a look and see how that works, so if I come in here and I type in, in my search bar, construction line add, you do have to type the word correctly. So when I come over here and I look through these different commands, it shows me exactly where they are in the toolbar. So if I look at construction line add, now I see that that's where construction line add is. If I come in here and I type in beam add, and I look at all these different tools, it shows me exactly where they are. Here it's showing me that add column stiffener at beam is in the material tab up here. You can see that gets highlighted. And if we go back to our PowerPoint, Next, we're gonna look at our quick access pinned icons. These are the icons on the left-hand side that we can set within modeling. Um, now we have options for moving those icons so we can organize them in the way that we want to. And we also have some options for the size of those icons. Let's go back into our modeling window. And here I have already preset some quick access icons. If I want to set those, um, if I go to a command, um, the little pull out that the pop out that comes out, I have an option to pin those to quick access. So if I wanted to pin that to quick access, I can. So now we have the option to organize those. So if I wanted that to be at the top of my list, I simply have to right click on that and move it to the desired location. So maybe I want to organize those in a specific way. Now I can do that. We also have options for the size of those icons. If we come back into the main menu under our user and site options. Under the general tab, we have the option here for quick access sidebar icons, small or large. By default, they're going to be set as small. If I want to ch check those over to large, I can do that. We'll go ahead and say OK. Just like other options within SDS2, in order for that to load, we need to exit out of modeling and come back in. Once our window's up, we're gonna be able to see that we now have large icons. So now that we're back in modeling, we can see that we have the like large icons in our quick access bar. Um, they're large, I can move them around as I did before. Um, small or large, I can organize those. So the next item is online help. So we have moved our help to being online. Um, what this does for us and for the customers is this will help us determine um, the needs of our customers. We can get some analytics of what people are looking for and if they're finding those topics in our help documentation. Um, this will also help us get out updates of new tools. So if there's no documentation at the beginning of the release cycle, we will be able to push that out and get, get the help out there for all of the new tools. And if there's an issue within the help documentation, we can update that and push that, and that will be updated on our online help. There's also offline help. So for people that do not have an internet connection or you lose an internet connection, uh, you will still be able to get to help. There is a local help that is installed. Be aware that this help may not be as up to date as the online help because we are pushing the online help um, out as often as we need to. So if we look inside of SDS2, 
we go back to our modeling window and let's just say we edit this member and we go to the help for that. It will bring up that help in a web browser. You'll see that you're at techsupport.sds2.com and where that help lies. And here we have the help for the beam edit window. There's also a sidebar navigation that if there's specific topics that I'm looking for, I can go and look those up in the sidebar navigation. Maybe I want to learn a little bit more about adding grid lines. I can go over to the add grid lines and look at the help for that. So here's our help documentation for the add grid line. Um, not all of the topics are within the sidebar navigation, but if you're looking for something specific, you can go up to the search and search for that and try to find what you're looking for. That's moving help online. Now, part of that is also our technical support site. So what we have done here is we've created a new site for technical support. This allows us to get all of the online help, all of our videos and different items within one area that is searchable. So you can search for Beam Ad and it will bring up relevant videos or help topics or maybe other documents that have been created um, all within that technical support site. This is also where online help is obviously accessible and you can access it from anywhere. You don't have to have SDS2 loaded. Um, if you're at home and you wanna research something, you can pull up the techsupport.sds2.com and go to the online help and, and search up topics. There's also a video library the toolbox items are there, and then some information about our new licensing as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new technical support site. So as I said before, if you go to techsupport.sds2.com, it's gonna take you to this area. Um, starting at the top, we have a download center. Um, this is where you would have gone to install or download the new version of SDS2 2022. We have our release notes, installation instructions. If you go down, you also have the option for load planning. And then some previous versions of SDS2, these are gonna be for the new licensing. So we have 2021 II, 2020 II, 2018 and 2017. Those are good for the new licensing um, that you have either moved over to or will be moving over to shortly get those versions here in the download center. Let's go back to the main page. Um, there's also a button up here to contact support. And then we talked a little bit about the search option. We'll come back to that here in a minute, um, but this is gonna search this whole site for any relevant information. If we look at the getting started section, um, we have some links here for the download center, hardware requirements, and here's an area that will give us a little bit more insight on the licensing. Um, we have our how to, our new feature document here for the SDS2 login and licensing management. Um, organizational license administrator portal. So if you're the org admin for your company, um, this is an easy way to get there. And then we have some SDS2 licensing FAQs that uh, give you a little bit more information about our new licensing. And there's some learning, learning options here and then our community um, project upload. So if you're gonna upload a project to support, um, this is where you can do that. Um, there's also some information, toolbox is linked here, and access to the forums is also linked here. So this is kind of the getting started. It's, it's a, a bunch of different links that, that are useful and used day-to-day -day by our customers. Um, and then we have the section for our online help. We've already seen this area. We came into this earlier. Um, this is where our help documentation is stored. Um, there's also new to 2022 and this is where I can get to the, some of those new feature documents um, for the new features within 2022. We'll go back out. We also have our video library. We have some different topics, getting started, new features, new user interface, um, our .NET API, some videos 
that we've we've had created and then we have some load planning videos up there as well if i go to the new features we'll see the different versions of sts2 listed here and the new features within those if we click on one of these links here it will pop up a window that that shows me the video i can watch that video right here i can once i start watching it i can expand it um, i can also go to YouTube and watch it on YouTube as well. But this just gives us a localized area that we have the most pertinent videos um, up to date that you can come and look at. We also have our training courses area here. Um, accounts and billings. Product news. This will be updated as we go along with information um, for SDS2 and other products, um, kind of giving you some insight on, on maybe what's coming or if there's any issues or, or anything like that. We will post up product news there. Then you have access to the SDS2 to the toolbox. and the SDS2 forum um, directly here from this main page. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that search a little bit more. Um, if we type in something like adding construction lines and we go ahead and search for that, it will come up and give me a results for adding construction lines. It's searching this whole site. Um, as we move along, we're going to try to move as much content over to this site so we get more information here. This is also where we get our analytics. When you search for something, when you go to certain pages, um, we can find out what, what you're, what you're, where you're going and if you found that information or not. Um, so here we have add construction line. We can go to that document and learn a little bit more about construction line add. Or maybe it's a new feature like connection cubes. We click on that and it will give us the pertinent information for connection cubes reports for structural nodes connection cube edit so all of that information is listed right here in that help menu it is a little bit more robust search than what we've had in the past um, that searches those docu documents a little bit more aggressively and gives me more topics there as you can see i have 516 results here um, anywhere the construction line add is noted it's going to give me a hit on that so that's the look at our new technical support site um, like i said we're going to add more information there as we go along um, if you have any any suggestions on content topics or information that needs to go up on that technical technical support site please let us know and we'll uh, look at getting that that information up there so let's go into questions now. Um, we do have a couple of uh, upcoming events um, and SEC March 23rd through the 25th in Denver, Colorado. We're going to be there at booth um, 2411. Um, we also have a couple of presentations that we'll be doing at NASCC. I hope uh, we hope to see see a bunch of people at uh, NASCC this year. And then SDS2 Summit is going to be in San Antonio, Texas this year, October 19th through the 20th. Um, so if we hope we hope to see a lot of you guys out there at uh, those two events this year. So we're going to look at some questions, and I think we have some polls to do as well. Um, I'm going to, well, here, let's do a first quick poll. Um, how often do you work in 
the new SDS2 Lightning mode versus Classic mode interface. Let's go ahead and uh, do that poll. I'll answer some questions while, while you guys are doing the poll. Um, someone asked, is the offline help uh, updates uh, from time to time, or are we stuck with the one from the installation only? Um, you are with the installation, have the offline help. Um, then once 2022i comes out, um, that will be updated then as well. Um, so it's during the inst installation is when that offline help gets updated. It's not going to be that far off of what the online help is going to be. Um, you know, it's we're going to update that, but um, I, I we'll 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 consider um, we'll we'll see what kind of changes we make and and if there is a need for updating offline help in the future, we'll 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 look at the needs for that, but. Um, as of right now, it's just when you do the installation is when you get your offline help. Um, the next question I have is if we want to create personal presets for dark mode and light mode, is that possible? Um, I don't believe that is possible right now. You can, maybe Adit, you can answer this question. Um, sure. I was just... Better. I was just typing up a response to that. Okay. Um, so the you have those buttons which allow you to set palettes for light and dark mode. Those buttons just represent our hard-coded presets uh, that we recommend that you use. But uh, as Ryan showed during the presentation, you still have full control over all of the different colors for uh, showing the uh, the text color inside the modeling environment or the background of the uh, the modeling window itself in, inside the modeling session. You do not have the ability to control the color of the windows themselves or the dialogues and so on. Those are built in and it's just the first UI theme setting. Uh, but as far as the palettes themselves, Absolutely, it's fully customizable, and you have the options right beneath the dark mode and light mode buttons that Ryan demonstrated today. Let's go ahead and close the poll that we just did. Looks like we got a about 50% in classic mode and then a scattering of um, the other different modes with lightning mode coming in with 25%. Okay, we have another pool, poll to do. Um, if you still use classic mode interface, what UI features do you consider the most valuable? And we have about four different options there. And while you're answering that question, we'll go on to a couple more uh, questions that people have posted. Will dark mode work with classic mode? Yes, that is that that will work with uh, classic mode as well. Someone asked how uh, they didn't they didn't see how we got to the technical support site. Um, if you go to uh, tech support at SDS2 or tech support sds2.com, um, that's how you get to the technical support technical support site techsupport.sds2.com. And also, if you just click on um, at the main menu, there's a technical support um, button there within the options for uh, different links. Um, and if you just hit help within SDS2, it'll take you to that tech support site as well. Um, someone also asked, is there a viewer for 2022? Um, I don't think we've pushed out the viewer for 2022, but that will be something that we'll, uh, we're working on and will be coming out the viewer for 2022. If it's not out there already, is, 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 do you know if there's a viewer available yet? Can you, uh, I'm sorry, is there a viewer for 2022? Yeah. Uh, I, I know that the, you do have a viewer install, uh, but as far as the, uh, I, I'm not fully familiar if that, that's what we're talking about here. Are we talking about the SDS2 viewer station? Uh, if yeah. so, um, 
we'll get that answer to you. I I, I just need to um, get that information from Steph or someone else. I'm and not I just I just I, I in my other ear I just got a confirmation that yes, there is a 2022 viewer. Okay. Well, there you go. Just uh, while we are talking, uh, there was another question that came up. Will the new search function work with classic mode? Uh, if you're talking about the find command built into the modeling or drawing editor lightning mode interfaces, no. But if you're talking about search within the help documentation, yes, there is th that search is built into it, whether it's online or offline. Looks like we close the poll here. Um, fixed toolbar layout once customized uh, was the most used, most valuable feature, and tool toolbar drag and drop custom customability was uh, second with thirty three percent. So we have a response. It it went into questions instead of chat, but that's okay. Someone said that mode configuration is the most valuable to me. I need to clarify that mode configuration exists even in Lightning. It's not something that's specific to Classic. So the next poll is, which content do you find most helpful in learning new releases of SDS2? Short technical videos, webinars, how-to articles, help documentation, the support department. Go ahead and answer that question. Um, someone asked, um, I could not see if you were able to change the color of model dimensions. So I'm guessing within the when we go to dark mode, are we able to change the color of model dimensions within there? Unknown. Uh, I don't remember actually. We'll have to go look at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm pulling it open right now to see real quick if that is possible. Dimensions and annotations is is an option in there. So. Um, I'm guessing that is a yes, that you can do that. So they're kind of all under one area of dimensions and, and annotations. Will the new model grid labels have a different color than the actual grid line colors? If I choose blue and my labels are blue and make them, it will make them hard to find. Not sure what the question there is. So give me a sec. I'm just typing up a response. A lot of uh, engagement on chat. I'm liking it. Uh, I'm just typing up a couple of responses. I'll get to it. Okay. Um, good. Let's go ahead and close the poll on the content. And it looks like uh, short technical videos uh, won out shortly by webinars, which uh, which is good. Those are very similar to each other. Um, how-to articles, then help documentation, or help documentation, then how-to articles, um, and then the support department, which I'll slug um, the sort. Oh, Someone, I'm just looking at some of the unanswered questions. One of them right now is, are you looking into drag and drop in uh, addition into lightning mode? Uh, the answer is that sometime in the future, it's not going to be not necessarily in a year or two, just don't know when. Uh, we are looking to combine the best features of classic mode and lightning mode and put it into one interface. For some time now, we've been uh, messaging users stating that we are migrating to a new user interface technology. Uh, the home screen was our first application of that. Uh, 
the drawing editor and modeling window is currently being shifted over to that new technology. And we are not going to give you two separate UI modes anymore. We are going to give you just one. We are going to give you a combination of classic and lightning that represents the best of both worlds. That was the intent behind the original classic and lightning release. It was to get you to try it and provide us with feedback. Um, so yeah, short answer, are we looking to add drag and drop features into lightning mode? Yes, because it is one of the features that a lot of our customers say um, is valuable in classic mode. So if you have other features from classic mode that you really want in lightning mode or whatever the future is, call it lightning if you want to, um, We'll you'd have to speak up and let us know what that feature is. We'll make sure it's there. So going back to the question about the grid lines and whatnot, there are options within there um, for changing the colors of your grid line, grid bubbles um, to two different colors when you're in the dark mode versus light mode. You confirm that? I confirm that, yes. I, I look, I, um, yeah, within user options under the modeling tab, Under my different colors, I have um, right under grid line or dimensions and annotations, I have grid line slash bubble, and I can pick a color for that as well. Right. I can see the confusion. If it, if you had a really dark background and you had also dark grid line colors and stuff, it would have been a little difficult to see. Yep. Uh, but yes, so dimensions, grid lines, yeah, I see it too. It's the, it, under the <laughs> user site options of the modeling tab, you do have them called out as separate um, settings. So you're right. Thank you for that. So how often do you use help documentation as our current poll right now? Daily, once or twice a week, weekly and monthly. A few more questions coming in. How about the text color within the bubble? I'll have to look into that and kind of play around with that and see uh, see what options are there. and, and uh, I believe that might be with the annotations. We'll have to kind of see what uh, I'll see what, what changes there. Get back, yeah. Someone said that they haven't had uh, help documentation for the last couple of years. Um, not maybe installed correctly. Well, now it'll go to online help. So um, hopefully you can get to that online help and have that help uh, available to you. And it looks like on the poll that's closed uh, monthly, one out, but uh, once or twice a week was a close second and um, looks like people are using the help documentation. So that's a good thing. And we, we want to, uh, with the online help, we want to, you know, keep that up to date as much as possible and, and give you guys as much content as you can. And like we had said in the, like I'd said in the, you know, previously, if, if you have any suggestions on content that would be useful, um, sure and, and let us know and, and feed us any information that, that will be helpful to you guys because that's what we're here to do is, is to give you guys the information you need so and, and the online help will help us do that with some of the analytics that we can get off of that will there be any in-person seminars uh, for SDS2 2022 um, there there are none there are there are not any that are scheduled. Um, I don't believe that we're going to be doing any in-person ones. Um, if there's a big call for that, um, you know, we, we can look at that for the future. But uh, as of right now, there are no, there are no scheduled. Um, you can always come to the summit. There's always, uh, there'll be topics on 2022 uh, at the summit. Um, and NASCC, you know, there's there's a lot of information, good information that will be given there. Um, so you can always you can always see us in person at those those different events as well. Okay. Okay. 
Christian, any other questions we need to answer? Yeah. I'm looking at the text color within the bubble. That was the only one that seems to be um, out there, but I'm setting up inside of SDS2 to see if I can prove something. Modeling grid pen color. And somebody somebody said uh, for newer versions, help documentation will be used daily. Um, and that's, you know, in, in the past, um, we may have not been fully documented on some of the features that come out with new versions. Um, we're, we're trying to get better and better at that when the new version comes out to have it fully documented. But this online help, if there is something that wasn't quite fully documented, we can push that out with online help and, and you'll have full access to um, the most current content that we, that we have that we have um, available. So um, I think that'll be a benefit to to you guys is that online help. Well, I, I think they're also trying to allude to the learnability aspect of the software itself. Um, we are doing our best to come up with new videos, and uh, we are trying to make the software as learnable as we can but it does require a certain level of user participation as well provide us with feedback tell us what's difficult in terms of using the software and uh, we will do our best to accommodate Um, for new licensing, we have to wait for an invitation to create or our own account. We have to wait for an invitation to create our own account. Um, you should have gotten an invitation. Your um, organization should have gotten an invitation to get into the new licensing. Um, if your company has a organization and um, adm administrator, um, they can create those invitations within the company, um, but initially your company should have gotten a invitation um, for the new licensing. If you have not received anything or you're unaware of of that, check with check with other people in your company or um, contact uh, SDS2, and, and we'll get you set up with an invitation. But um, by now, you should have gotten an invitation. I believe February 9th, if you want to look back in your email, was when a lot of those invitations went out. So um, contact us if you haven't seen anything yet. Will there be any webinars for the customized interface? I'm not sure what the customized interface is referring to. I, I think it's referring to the lightning mode uh, configuration itself, uh, how, how to create ribbons and how to customize that side of the interface. Uh, I would like to say that there is, we, we've created a few videos and there is adequate documentation inside of the, uh, inside tech support.sgs2.com that actually provides more information that we can than we can actually do in the form of a webinar series. So uh, I'll, I'm just going to put the links on chat so that you can look at it at your own leisure. It's really well documented. It uh, provides you uh, a learning experience at your own pace. So um, yeah, yeah within within techsupport.sds2.com is there's a in the video library, there is a section for uh, the user interface that uh, is a series of videos that they can watch here, correct there? Right. Right. I'm, I'm just adding it to that location itself, in, into that question. So inside the video library, as you said, there's an entire section just dedicated to lightning mode and everything else that you need to learn from there. Uh, someone is asking us to show the uh, dark mode and light mode from the SDS2 window. Um, again, just because they missed it in the first 10 minutes. Uh, we are recording this video. I would assume that uh, we'd be able to send that video out to these to the attendees. 
Yeah, so, it, it, this this video will be this, this webinar will be posted up, and um, like, they'll be able to watch the watch the video. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be within the day, but within the next couple of days, it'll be available. So. Okay, so I've just confirmed that the new model grid labels do not have a different color than the um, actual grid lines themselves from the looks of it. So the line and the bubble, they both have the same color. So sounds like it's a potential feature request, which I'm happy to turn in and our team will evaluate as needed. Um, someone asked, uh, when when can we expect 2020 launcher with new licensing? Um, I'm guessing you're talking about the install for 2020. If you go to techsupport.sds2.com, um, there's a up in the upper right hand corner. There's a download center. At the bottom of that page, there is a um, option for downloading 2020 II, which is 2020 that has the new licensing feature in it so um there there already is a install for 2020 ii um install okay so someone uh, i'm just going back to a question if you use a black background you cannot find the grid labels can we change the labels to white with grid lines a different color as mentioned, no, the the labels are the same color as the grid lines at this point, but you can obviously change the entire thing into something that's lighter. Um, someone has also asked about the ability to add classic icons into lightning mode. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Uh, the reason being that uh, we've received a lot of feedback saying that uh, we have colorblind users. We uh, They represent a significant portion of the people who use our software. Uh, and the effort to change the icons was not just about aesthetic. It was also about making sure that they can identify and make use of some of those icons. Um, if you have participated in one of our previous seminars, we've even shown you examples of some of those icons, which honestly didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Um, what we did do was to create a cheat sheet, which is also on the SDS2 website, um, it's an icon cheat sheet that lets that you can print off as a PDF if you wanted to, uh, and it shows you the old icons against the new one. Uh, so I'll make uh, once I get a hold of that link, I will put it on chat. Uh, you're free to print it out and take it from there. Yeah, a lot of que similar questions about text color and the bubble. That is a valid request. I'm I'll be turning it in. Someone is asking for webinars in Portuguese. I'm sure our uh, friend Roberto will be more than happy to oblige. Someone made a comment about or question about uh, not being able to move up because their customers are not uh, in the the current version, so they may lag behind a little bit, and um, it's it's a reason that they they would like newer versions to be more user friendly. And that you can go on this a little bit more, maybe, but um, that that's our goal is to try to make um, SDS two as, as user friendly as possible, and and uh, not not need a lot of learning, but but uh, you know be able to jump into it and and use it, uh, and that's a goal of ours, is to, is to make it as user-friendly as possible. So it looks like the icon cheat sheet is no longer available on the web. Uh, forgive me for digressing, but uh, we will make sure that uh, it we can we provide some kind of a link to it so that you can get it if it's of use to you. So yeah, back to that topic again. Um, one of the key reasons that we have identified as to why our users do not adopt the new version is primarily um, the paranoia associated with jumping to a new version of the software. That uh, That's something that we've historically been a bit bad with stability. I think 2019, we actually pulled an entire release because we weren't ready, we weren't willing to 
release something that was uh, unstable. Um, this is from personal experience. I am a developer on the SDS2 team. And uh, one of the things that SDS2 has done in the past couple of years is to attempt to redefine its image and its mission. And uh, we have a core value, which is reliability. Uh, we have taken steps to ensure that the software is rigorously tested uh, automatically by, by a machine rather than by humans to make sure that the software stability is not affected in any new released version of the software. Uh, what that basically means is that if 2021i was stable, 2022 will build on that stability. You will never have a regression or a breakage of existing features uh, from here on out because they will be continuously and automatically tested by a machine rather than by a human. Um, so that is one of the primary reasons why we, at least we have identified that as one of the reasons why a lot of our, um, some of our customers would not want to jump. And yes, I understand. So if you're customers and you don't have uh, the same version of the software, you would want to stick with what they have. But I, encourage you to advocate for the change just i mean you if you want to work in classic nothing has changed in 2022 you will still have classic it's likely going to be there that way for a few years um it's as stable as it's going to be there's no real reason that the only thing that you're missing out on are the new features and i believe we had an entire uh, session dedicated to it at the sds to summit last year and uh we highlighted at least a few of those features that you missed out on. And the stuff that you saw today, again, will be stuff that you will miss out on to help with um, the adoption of the new software. Another question from chat is about keyboard shortcuts. Um, and yeah, so you have keyboard shortcuts, you have mode configurations, and you have uh, I, I believe the other thing was also the right-click menu shortcuts in classic mode. So we have a utility that is listed under the uh, utility functions on the home screen, home screen utilities. There's a location that's, uh, if you just search for convert uh, classic keyboard shortcuts and modes, the, it is a function that exists. And what you can do with that is import your existing toolbar configuration into lightning mode and make use of the same keyboard shortcuts that you're familiar with. So that, yeah, I'll put that on chat for Mr. Venkatesh. It is home, the home screen utilities, utility. I also, I also posted in chat, um, the link to the icon guide. It was it was up there. I think uh, it was hiding on the SDS2 site. Um, I put a link up there for it. Uh, we'll need to move that over to the technical support site, though. So, thank you for that. There are a couple of hardware questions that are coming in. Um, my best suggestion to you would be to contact support and talk those over with them. Um, they deal with a lot of. Uh, a lot of different customers that have different setups, um, and they might be able to answer some of those questions for you. In-person seminars at, for SDS2 2022. I personally love that, but that's uh, something for the rest of the team to take on. I enjoyed doing them. Yeah. The COVID, COVID kind of put a halt to them, and... Um, We've got a lot of good response. The, the great thing about doing some of these webinars is that today we had 300 and some people signed up for for the webinar, where as when we do in-person ones, which it's a different experience, but uh, you know, we, we can reach a lot of people with, with a lot of the different webinars. If, if we could do both, that would be great. But uh, you know, there's certain restrictions that, uh, that, that don't allow us to do those. And if, if there's a big call for them, you know, we can reconsider it, but. Uh, 
So it sounds like we've identified a performance problem. Uh, Stephen Brumbo has just mentioned that um, apparently using uh, keyboard shortcuts in lightning mode has a performance issue. We will definitely look into that and uh, keep an eye on it. We, we are doing our best with testing. And of course, we have um, one of the things that would help Stephen is to know if you are making use of it over a network or if it is something that's local to your own machine. Uh, we have already identified that having a data directory on a network adds to the slowdown factor of it. It is something that we are ramping up testing on, uh, but that might also be factoring into why some of that latency is happening. Um, but yes, we will. We had, we've already taken your consideration into advisement. We've we're doing what we can to read stuff ahead of time so that it doesn't slow the machine down as much as it does. Uh, we'll, we'll do what, what we can to improve that situation. To answer Harshal's question, he has 32 gigs of RAM, 12 cores of i5, and a graphics card. Yes, STS2 is still single-threaded, uh, so it will not be using more than a single core on that machine. Uh, other than uh, if you have multiple processes, multiple SDS2.exe processes running, that's when it will make use of those additional cores. But a given session of SDS2 is going to use a single core, unfortunately. So um, it will it's not using the full power. Yes, someone also asked, can you switch from classic to lightning and vice versa while working in a project? Yes, it is just a user interface configuration you can switch back at any time. You just have to restart your session. That's the only thing. Uh, can the previous toolbar configurations be imported into 2021 and 22? I will say that you can bring forward your keyboard mode and right-click menu configurations. You can extract them from your toolbar configurations because they're all one monolithic file in the past. Uh, you cannot bring your the location of your tools in to the new interface. Uh, it's it's just incompatible with the new interface. We have tabs across the top of the screen. Uh, you have a purpose behind the sidebar, at least for now. Uh, the left sidebar is only for quick access and pin and history. We are working on that. As I said, the the new interface that is coming up with, which is going to be a combination of classic and lightning, uh, it will afford us the ability to potentially import the existing toolbars into that. No guarantees. We have to think about how to make that happen. We It was not possible with the existing Lightning configuration. What else? OK, so you have an M.2. Yeah, so I don't think latency is a problem. Uh, all right, we look into it, Stephen. Thank you for that information. We will take a look at it as best we can. And to answer Edward's question again, uh, can I transfer my tools on the left side from 2021 to 2022? Well, if you're using Classic, the only thing that you cannot transfer is Classic to Lightning. You can transfer Lightning 2021 to Lightning 2022. That will work just fine. It's just like your regular toolbar configurations. They, they would have worked since 7.3. Um, and again, previous, uh, so, to answer the question, if, if you're talking about bringing your lightning mode configuration over from a previous version, uh, there are a few files that exist in the data directory. Uh, we'll, give, we'll probably put up a video that shows how to do that migration. We'll, we should do an, uh, a video on that, so we'll put it up for you. Um, you can, there are a certain set of folders that you can copy from your data directory in 2021. And you can just put that into 2022. It's similar to the way you would do your regular toolbars. Uh, you would take the, the the old files and drop it into the new data directory. You would do the same thing with uh, several folders instead of just one in uh, for the Lightning mode specifically. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll put something up to explain how to do that. It might even be worth turning it into a tool. I'll turn it. I'll turn that into a feature for next time, maybe. 
Um, and again, when we're talking about importing commands from a previous version, versioning is less important than going between classic and lightning. Classic is an interface. The classic is the interface that you're familiar with if you've been working on SDS2 since 20, since before 2020. Uh, 2021 came out with both classic and lightning. And cla uh, lightning and classic are, is the spot where you have a little bit of incompatibility. You can only bring forward your keyboard shortcuts, your, your mode configurations, and your right-click menus. You cannot bring forward your toolbars. There is a utility function that I had posted a little bit earlier. Uh, it's called convert classic. Hold on, let me just get the exact name. It's called convert classic keyboard shortcut and modes. It is a utility function, and it'll let you extract from your monolithic toolbar configuration files and put it into the format that Lightning will recognize. Uh, so to answer Ranjit's question, uh, 2022 is exactly the same as 2021i, with a few minor enhancements to classic and Lightning, such as the dark mode, and uh, the stuff that Ryan covered at the beginning of the webinar. Uh, it's going to have a combination of Lightning and Classic will happen at a future release. It is not going to be done even for 2023 at this point. Uh, so it's a ways away. Uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of time. And I think we're going to um, wrap it up there. Yeah, we've hit our hit our hour time box and uh, we'll, uh, if, if We'll, we'll try to answer any of your questions that uh, we maybe have an answer. We'll go kind of back through them. Um, but if, if you have any further questions, be sure to contact um, support directly and, uh, and we'll, we'll get your answer. We'll get your questions answered. That sound good, did it, yeah? That sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you all for uh, coming to the webinar today and uh, we hope to see you in uh, future webinars. Thank you. Thank you all, and keep the feedback coming. We really appreciate your engagement with us.